Hello, everybody. My name is Barry Johnson, and welcome back to another edition of Studio Talk. Adams Audio sent me a pair of their T7V studio monitors, and we're going to take a look at those today. So let's get straight to it. Okay, as I mentioned in the intro, Adams Audio sent me a pair of their T7V studio monitors, which are aimed at the mid-level project studio. So before I get into my thoughts and everything on the monitors and tell you um, really the conclusions that I have regarding these monitors and where they set in the competition, let's take a look at these monitors and go over some of the specs. The series comes in three different models. The first one with a 5-inch woofer, the second with a 7-inch woofer, and lastly, the last one with an 8-inch woofer. The tweeter in all three units is powered by a 20-watt power amp, and the woofer is powered by a 50-watt power amp. Each monitor, as you expect, has its own level control. There are two three-way switches that adjust the monitor's high and low frequency response by plus or minus 2 dB. All three models can automatically accept AC voltages ranging from 100 to 240 volts. Refer to the manual for proper placement of the monitors as well as the right surfaces to mount your monitors on. On the back, we have a base reflex port. The base reflex port works together with the monitor's woofer to produce flat and extended bass response. Next is a high frequency switch. Use this switch to boost or cut the monitor's high frequency response by 2 dB. The zero setting maintains a flat response. On next is a low frequency switch. Use this to boost or cut the low frequency response by 2 dB. The zero setting maintains a flat response. And then next up, we've got the level knob, which is obvious. Turn it up and turn it down. Next, an unbalanced RCA connector for minus 10 dB. Okay, so now that we've looked at the monitors, let's talk about price. These are in the $249 to basically $500 a pair uh, price point, which sets them um, fairly square in the middle of the mid-level project studio. Um, you know, they, they compare, uh, their typical competition is Presonus, JBL, um, Focal, um, and, and, and amongst others, um, Yamaha. Anyway, I could go on and on about the competition. Now, now let me get this out of the gate. Um, it's been a while since I've used uh, studio monitors in this particular price range. Uh, I have owned them before, and uh, but my recollection is is not as well as as it would be if they were, you know, if I just recently upgraded. So, so I can only judge these monitors based upon how they sound uh, in comparison to um, the monitors I use, which is not really fair, um, but it's it, it's the one that I did. Now you can look back back over there. Uh, hang on, back over there, and you'll see that I've got a pair of uh, Adam A seven seven Xs now. Those monitors back over there are fifteen hundred dollars each. Okay, so that's you know it's three grand. These are five hundred dollars each. Okay, or five hundred dollars a pair. I'm sorry. So you know they're one sixth of the cost of those speakers back over there. And so it, of course it's unrealistic and insane to think that these speakers, being the uh, T7Vs, are going to sound as good as those speakers back there. Of course not. But I can at least get some kind of idea um, uh, how far off they are. And, and and at least come to some conclusion on that. Okay, so the first thing I did is get them set up uh, in the proper mix position, where they were equally distanced um, between each other and my ears. Now, when you go and you download their uh, their manual for these monitors, it gives you recommendations on how to set them up uh, and what type of surfaces you should be mounting them to. So now I'm going to talk about the mix position. You know, um, I found that unlike my A77Xs who ha that have a very, very, very defined mix position, you move out of that 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 spot that you know that that sweet spot as they say, and you're gonna lose you know, you're gonna lose your your balance, you're gonna lose um, some frequency response, you know, your panning is gonna be somewhat off. They're not a set of monitors that you can be, stand in the back of the room and experience anywhere near like you could if you are in the sweet spot. Now. That, that's important when you're dealing with with some high-end monitors or more expensive monitors. I, I'll say high-end for the project studios because no doubt about that. I doubt very many project studios out there have a set of $3,000 monitors. 
Um, and so I happened to got an incredible deal on those. Uh, and I actually paid about $2,200 for both of those. So I saved quite a bit of money, but uh, that was kind of a fluke thing. I kind of was in the right place at the right time and, and got a deal on them with a, a music store that was going out of business, okay? So anyway, once I got them set up and I listened to, the, to, to and found the right sweet spot for these monitors, then I tested about moving about the room and seeing, you know, did they lose their definition? Did you lose a lot of uh, frequency response when you move left or right, backwards or forwards? You know, was a stereo image there, you know, um, as, as I moved around the room? And I found that they do incredibly well um, moving around in your space. Now, of course, you're gonna lose some. The further back you're gonna get, you're gonna lose certain frequencies. And when you go left and right, you might see, you know, you know, you would expect to lose some stereo image. But overall, I think these held uh, held up incredibly well for having a very what I'll call a very flexible sweet spot. But that said, when I was in the sweet spot, it was definitely the sweet spot. Now these monitors are powered by a 70 watt power amp for the woofers and a 20 watt power amp for the tweeters. Now one of the things that honestly just flat out shocked me. Uh, when I started turning them up, is these things are loud. I mean, really loud for their size. They filled up this room incredibly well. I was literally shocked at the volume that I could get out of them without losing any clarity or definition, not being overwhelmed with certain frequencies, you know, as you can tend to push the monitors. They maintained their fidelity all the way through um, volume level. I didn't go quite to 10, but I pushed it pretty good, and these things sounded great. Okay, so here's another thing that most of us look for in our studio monitors, is how much low end do they have? Now, this particular set, the T7V with a seven inch woofer, sets in the mid-level of, of their woofers. You know, the, 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 there's, a, there's a five inch woofer, an eight, a seven inch woofer, and an eight inch woofer. You would expect the eight, in, eight inch woofer to have more bass than the seven, and the seven more than the five. And um, so I was honestly not expecting very much low end out of these monitors. Uh, when you look at the size of them, they're very petite to say the least, okay? They're, they're, I'm looking down them to the, my left over there and, and they're pretty small. Let, let me pick one up and you can get an idea, you know, as far as relation to, you know, I got, I'm sorry, I'm looking at a monitor over there, but you can get an idea here um, of the size. So they're not they're not itty bitty, but they're certainly they're not um, they're not big studio monitors. I would say my A77Xs are maybe two, maybe two and a half times the size of those. And so I didn't really expect to get much bottom end. I thought it would be okay. I did expect it to be tight for sure. You know, I did expect that bottom end to be tight because the bottom end on, on those monitors back there is incredibly tight. And so um, so anyway, so when I started cranking them up, I played a variety of music across the board. I just went into Apple Music and started picking multiple genres, uh, literally everything I could find. I tried everything on these speakers. And um, I was shocked. I mean, shocked at how much low end I got out of these things. It literally was stunning. I mean, absolutely stunning but it wasn't flubby. You know, a lot of times if you get too much low end out of a speaker, sometimes manufacturers try to emphasize that bass a little bit too much to kind of give you that illusion that you're getting a well-balanced uh, 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 spectrum of fre frequencies as you should. I mean, you want your speakers to be flat, your monitor, your studio monitors to be flat. You don't really want them enhanced. And um, But I found that, 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 that the deep bass came through incredibly well when I was listening to, to other genres of music where it was like just a mid-level punch, but just a, a tight low end, but not a super bottom end. It retained that. I was shocked at how well these speakers uh, stood up uh, to, to the variety of music and, and the clarity and the depth of the music was, was absolutely stunning. All right, so now you know I like the low end on these things. You know, these th those babies got some bottom, okay? So let's talk about the high end. Let's talk about the higher end frequencies. Um, some studio monitors can get really harsh, especially studio monitors uh, in this particular price point. Uh, and the, the more you crank them up, the more kind of eh, ear scratchy a little bit they can be. Now, now I'm, I'm really getting nitpicky on that. They're not really that obvious, obviously. You wouldn't want to use any kind of monitor like that. But if you're trying to really get nitpicky on these things, you know, a lot of times you either get flubby in the bass or you get harsh, harsh, uh, or uh, I would say the, 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 um, the tonality of some harshness, in, you know, kind of creeping into the tone uh, with the tweeters if, if, if you don't get that balance. And, 
And I'm going to tell you that the 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 high end, the tweeters on these things was incredibly smooth. I mean, almost polished. There was no harshness whatsoever. The clarity of every little thing was so intricate. I pulled up a song that I have that that deals with a lot of unique percussion and orchestral uh, type instruments that I like to use for you know really being able to fine tune um, panning and 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 the ability to to have certain things you know stick out over other frequencies and I and I played that song uh, through these speakers and I mean I heard everything perfectly crystal clear and it was amazing the high end of these things never got harsh they never got shrill. I, I, I still can't get over the fact that these monitors are in the $500 price range, you know? And so as far as high end is concerned, silky smooth, baby. Okay, so to conclude, this is honestly the first product that's been sent to me by a vendor. I've done reviews of other products, but those are products that I own and use, okay? So this is the first one. And I take the reputation of this channel very seriously. And I, and I never want to be known as the, as the person who pushes gear, who gets in, in bed, so to say, with, with gear manufacturers to help them push their product. You know, I want to be the type of channel that you can at least trust and know that it is my honest opinion. Uh, you know, I, I'm not telling you what, I, what they want me to say. I'm telling you what, what, I, what I think and how I feel. When, before they offer to send these monitors to me, I made it perfectly clear that I'm going to be very honest. And, 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 if, and, if, and if, where I find fault with these monitors, I'm going to talk about it. And I'm not going to give you a chance to view this video before I post it. And, and, and they said that was one of the reasons why they picked me, because they thought that that is the type of channel that I have. And it is what I strive to do. And, and I think if anybody's watched my channel, you know I've taken on some of the big players out there uh, and been very critical uh, especially of Avid and Universal Audio, although my my point with Universal Audio was not to be critical, it was to nudge them because I'm actually a big fan of that company. So, uh, and I actually did a recent review of their Volt series, um, uh, a preview, I should say, more than a review. Um, so anyway, back to these monitors. You know, I, 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 I kept telling myself before they got here, you know, I have got to find something wrong with them. I've got to find something I don't like about. There has to be something because I'm watching other reviews on these monitors just to get a feel to see how other people feel felt about them. I'd only watch a little tidbit of it, get a general thing because I didn't want their opinions to sway my opinions. I wanted my ears to tell me uh, what I need to say about these monitors. Um, now, now, keep in mind, my comments right now are based on the fact that these are basically $250 each, $500 for a pair. And so I have to put that into perspective. You know, um, I'm not going to lie. The, the same mix that I was playing at on the on the uh, on those down there, the the, the T7Vs. Um, you know, I immediately uh, pulled it back up on my uh, A77Xs back there, and the A77Xs blew those monitors away. I mean, it was a whole new level. But you've got to expect that there are six times the cost. Okay, and so when you put into perspective that these are $500 a pair. And, and I, I, I can't find fault in them. I, I, I just can't. I, I'm, I'm literally blown away by these monitors. I cannot believe that today you can get an incredible sounding set of monitors, incredible powerful set of monitors, and the low end out of a seven inch woofer on these things. I just, I'm sorry, I, I, I can't find any fault. I mean, if, if, if I was out looking for a set of monitors right now in the $500 range, I wouldn't consider anybody else. I, I, I just wouldn't. Now, now, granted, I don't know. It's been a while since I've, I've auditioned more recent up-and-comings of the, of the you know, monitors in that price range. And may, for all I know, maybe they're as good as this. I, I seriously doubt it, you know, but, but it's always possible, right? I mean, anything's possible. Uh, you know, everybody knows Adam's Audio has an incredible reputation. I was even stunned that they even dipped their toes into this these waters, you know, and, you know, because they're known for high end monitors, you know. And so when you look at when you look at the value, the sound, uh, the tonality, the the output, the low end, all of that. I don't think you can find anywhere near a better, better set of monitors than these in the five hundred dollars. I think you'd be hard pressed to find a set of monitors that would sway my opinion away from them in the thousand dollar price range of pair. I think they're that good. 
And so, um, you know, usually I'll just tell you what I think and you come to your own conclusions, but I'm flat out telling you right now, if you're in the hunt for $500 monitors, go buy these monitors, okay? Go buy these monitors. Just know I'm not in bed with Adam Zotti or anybody else. I'm just telling you, the things sound freaking great. So with that, I hope you have a nice day. Okay, so what we have here today is Adam's T7V, uh, part of their T-series of their active near-field monitors. We're going to do a typical unboxing, and then, of course, we'll get to the meat and potatoes of the review in just a minute. All right. Typical boxing, as you would expect. Go down there with my knife here. Open this bad boy up. I think this is going to be a pretty basic and simple setup here. All right, so we open this up here. You can see here, it just comes with your power cord, as you would expect. Let me put my knife away so I keep things nice and safe. All right, so you got your power cord here. Set that off to the side. Pull this top piece off here. All right, nice sturdy construction inside there. And then, of course, you get your, your typical literature, as you would expect, you know, being the T-Series um, monitors here. Um, and they come in three available sizes. Um, and of course you've got, uh, in various languages on the back and you're basically your little manual or spec sheet and everything. Set that off to the side. Okay, so now let's pull this out of here. Case down in here. Pull this out. <clears throat> now let's set the box to the, well, let's turn it over sideways so you can see this. All right, so when you pull it out in the bottom, the, uh, Opening, of course, is back over here. I'm gonna pull that out, get my hand under there, hold that up, pull that out, and all right, so there it is. It's a typical unboxing video. You know, you got the front, you got the back. Okay, let's go to some product shots.